Hi, welcome to my channel. My name is Ilma, if you're new to my channel. I've been posting devotionals for nine years now every day. So today I'd like to share 1 Timothy 3 verses 1 to 7. And here's the word of God. It is a trustworthy statement. If any man aspires to the office of overseer, it is a fine work he desires to do. An overseer, then, must be above reproach, the husband of one wife, temperate, self-controlled, respectable, hospitable, skillful in teaching, not overindulging in wine, not a bully, but gentle, not contentious, free from the love of money. He must be one who manages his own household well, keeping his children under control with all dignity. But if a man does not know how to manage his own household, how will he take care of the church of God and not a new convert so that he will not become conceited and fail into condemnation incurred by the devil? And he must have a good reputation with those outside the church so that he will not fail in, um, so that he will not fall into disgrace and the snare of the devil. First Timothy 3, 1 to 7. Here's my devotional. Overseer qualifications. In this letter to Timothy, Paul breaks down the qualifications needed for an overseer. He wants them to be very clear that the office of overseer is an honorable position that needs to be clearly filtered. He specifies to Timothy the requirements needed for this very important position. Among these are, must be above reproach and has only one wife, temperate and self-controlled, respectable and hospitable, skilled in teaching, not a drunk or not a bully but gentle, not quarrelsome, and doesn't love money, one who manages his own household well and disciplines his children, and not a new convert and has a good reputation with those outside the church. Being an overseer in the church is not a position that must be taken for granted. Paul reminds Timothy to ensure that the house of God must be kept pure. If someone who takes the position of an overseer doesn't qualify based on these requirements, there will be division and other problems that may arise in the body of believers. Since the position is not merely a physical office, but a spiritual calling, the selection process must follow the law of God. Can you imagine what will happen if a corrupt and greedy and drunk or quarrelsome person gets an overseer position. Unity will be compromised and the Holy Spirit will be quenched. Reflection. Why is it important to select persons of reputation as overseers in the church? Being a Christian is not a religion. It is not a job it's not a manual job that uh, that you take and then you have another thing when you come home being a christian is living what the will of god is living the commandments following the lord uh, so if you are in the leadership and you do not follow a holy life or a sanctified life because uh, the Bible says that God is holy so those people who believe in him must be holy as well in other words they must be pure they must not be defiled so this is the reason why uh, Paul specifies to Timothy that you cannot just pick anybody uh, because if they are new as he said if they are new in the faith they might be easily um, um, swayed by the devil or uh, they don't have that foundation yet. If they are um, 
if they have something that are hiding in their life, it will come out, and that will that, that will exhibit um, a reputation that is not um, that is not pure. If they are not hospitable, how can they minister to others? And and this job is 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 uh, it's like it's not a job; it's a calling to minister. And they shouldn't be quarrelsome. Can you imagine if they're quarrelsome and they love money, they'll be greedy and all that stuff. So it's very important to choose the right overseer, or choose the right leaders in church, because if they're not right, they're going to corrupt the body of Christ. And then they will have other people um, leave the church, and that is not what the Lord wants. Uh, it's important that they are examples, otherwise they will put down uh, people's faith and they might uh, make other people sin as well. So I encourage you to ensure that if you are vying for a position of a leader in the church that you follow these qualifications. If not, you must be honest enough to say no to a position that is given to you if you think that any of these qualifications does not um, address um, your life. Thanks for watching. I hope you check my website at ilmaarts.com for artworks, photographs, and a copy of this vlog. And I hope you subscribe to my channel on YouTube so I could make more videos to bring the truth of God's Word. Thanks for watching.